नोने हालाने जमात मुझे कुछ कहे ना है पर है ये शर्त के जाए मेरा पैगाम ना हो It's interesting, a couple of days ago, I was reading an article in the newspaper and it was talking about the rise in mental health disorders. Mm -hmm. and, and what's interesting about this article was the fact that they could not pinpoint a specific cause, but they did say that social media has a huge role about this. And we just talked about social media in a previous episode about this. Sherry Arsal, perhaps you could shed some light on, on some of the symptoms. Absolutely, you know, uh, major depressive disorder is one of the easiest uh, disorders, mental illness disorders that is, that you can kind of uh, identify. Um, but with that being said, a lot of people say, you know, I've been feeling sad or I've been feeling, uh, you know, tired for a large portion of the day, so I must be depressed. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot more complicated than that, right? Mm -hmm. There's actually 11 checklist items as, uh, as per the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, which is mm -hmm. what all psychologists must follow. So, you know, as per that 11-item uh, checklist, there's five items which must be present for uh, at least a two-week period consecutively every single day, right? Mm -hmm. So these items include things like insomnia, you know, uh, reduced appetite, uh, depressed mood for most of the day, nearly every day, mm -hmm. right? So um, these disorders, uh, these, uh, you know, different, uh, what would you call them? Symptoms. Symptoms, symptoms. Mm -hmm. right. So these different symptoms must be exhibited for an extended period of time for you to be classified as depressed. Now, with that being said, you know, I feel like uh, culturally, there is this huge bias towards mental health, right? Whereas yeah, there's a huge stigma to it yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, where yeah. where we don't really give a lot of credence to it. We say that oh, you know, it's it's just a, a random thing, and they'll kind of go away with time. At the same time, I think that that's true. At the same time, it's also like you know, if sometimes a lot of the youth or you know even elderly, they they take advantage of this this word depression. <laughs> and you know, if they're going through like a sad phase in their life, they'll just be like, "Oh, I'm depressed," and then everybody's gonna be thinking like, "I'm always depressed, I'm always depressed." And you're just gonna label yourself yeah, as depressed. Yeah, because I mean, especially nowadays, it seems as if it's a word that's tossed around. Yeah, even though you're you not know, actually even depressed. Though, even yeah. though it's actually something that is very serious yeah. and needs to be so looked into. So when it is really serious, it like he's talking about, around, right? yeah, right. if, if he's talking about this, these criteria, if yeah. you meet that criteria, okay, you can be then you're diagnosed right. as exactly. depressed. Exactly. Right. But you should not be like as a youth. You should not be. You, first of all, as a youth, you should not be depressed. Like you should well, you can't up. really say but, that, right? Like, but, but if you are depressed, right. then you have to take it you know, you very seriously. I, I think, I think one, thing, one thing to even add on to that is that the age where kids are taught about depression is too young in one sense. And the reason why I say that is that... Yeah, and you know, that'll add to that fact that, oh, I'm depressed, it, you just say exactly, whenever you're sad. Because yeah. when, right. when you're a young child, though, they don't, obviously they don't understand the difference between depression and sadness. Mm -hmm. So the link mm -hmm. that they get in their mind is that, okay, when, every time I'm sad, I, 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 this it is basically depression. Yeah. So they can't really you know, make that And like, especially when we were kids, it's not a term that we would. That we heard. Yeah, it I wasn't a common term. Didn't hear it much exactly. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. much later. But nowadays, you hear about, you know, kids who are in, you know, grade four or five, and they're and they're committing suicide, and they're and they're, and they're, and yeah, they're, and they're, and that, they're yeah. depressed and right. clinically depressed, right? Right. So, and, and you know, I think uh, this is going back to one of our previous episodes about social media. We were learning, or sorry, we were discussing how uh, there's so much information. There's this plethora of information, and we just kind of pick and choose what we want, mm -hmm. right? And then we just subscribe to those kind of uh, mindsets. And I feel like depression has become one of those mindsets, whereas this information is so widely available that people start to, you know, force themselves into these criteria as opposed to just naturally falling onto uh, one of these yeah, 100%. assets. And in one sense, you know, on top of that too, it's become almost taboo, for example, in, in a South Asian culture to say that you are depressed. Yeah. Right. You know, at the same time, obviously, there are certain cases of depression that do exist, right? Mm -hmm. But within the South Asian culture, sometimes I feel like they kind of just say, you know, it's okay, don't worry about it. But in actually, it is there. You know, as well. Sometimes the South Asian so, culture, they just tell you, so it, like, okay, like, you'll be fine. Get right, over it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like the way I just did when I said as a kid, you shouldn't be depressed, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so with these 11 symptoms that somebody has to exhibit for a period of, you know, a certain amount of time. Two, two weeks, yeah, to be, consecutively. To um, be diagnosed as clinically depressed. Is it that nowadays depression is more widespread or was this always the case but we didn't hear about it? Like, I think it was always the case. Why is it that we're hearing about it more so now? I, I think it's more so awareness. Right, and there is a uh, better way to quantify uh, when someone has depression. Right, when how do I identify when someone has depression? So I feel like depression has always been there, 
but now we just have the means and the facilities to kind of, you know, bring someone in if they need help and kind of identify it. We do have that information out on the internet as well, whereas people, you know, who feel like there's something wrong with them can kind of go up and look at, you know, what they're feeling. They can seek that medical help and, and just kind of take it from there. I so don't, what's the cause um, of depression? Just going off to what he just said, sorry, yeah. but um, cut you off there, but I, I don't know the stats, but from what I can think of and what I've like, you know, mm -hmm. observed, I think it is on the rise. And I think it's mostly because of social media, because there's so many different other insecurities that are developing, you know, cyberbullying and things that we've already discussed. I think it might be on the rise, especially with the youth, because they didn't have no other way out, so they become depressed and then they become closed, and then nobody helps them, and then they're becoming. The, I see. The I see two so, sides to this as well. I see one side, which is the fact that we have better diagnostic system these days to, right. you know, address or to, mm. you know, label someone as depressed. So maybe 50 years yeah. ago there could be a population that was yeah, depressed. Yeah, and there was but, no but there's yeah. a diagnostic yeah. system for that. So there, there's that one aspect as well. But at the same time, I also feel the second aspect is the aspect of isolation though. You know, we, we talk about, for example, we come from families where it's all about the community, about mm -hmm. the family. Yeah. You know, we go to the masjid, we meet people. You know, it's all about the family or the bigger family. Mm -hmm. But these days, it's all about isolation. You yeah. go to work, you, you go in your car, you go by yourself, you Everybody go to work. Minds your own business. You mind your own yeah. business, you're on your phone, so you become isolated. And so when you're not used to that, that like you don't talk to people, you don't have yeah. any human interaction. Interactions. The only interaction you have is through texting or through WhatsApp you know, or something. You know, in psychology, there are these two uh, facets, right, which kind of describe how people see themselves. So there's an internal locus of control and an external locus of control. And so, you know, I, I would kind of agree with what you said with regards to when we were children, right, not a lot of people exhibited these depressive symptoms, but that's because we all had this internal locus of control, right? We believed that we had the capability of shaping our own world. But now with the prevalence of social media, it's an external locus of control, right? Because now my worth mm -hmm. is established by how many likes I can get, mm -hmm. how many you know comments I can get, and what the comments are. Mm -hmm. So it's no longer you know you looking at yourself and saying I can do this, right? Now it's a matter of you saying, do others think I can do this? Mm -hmm. But I think all of these things tie into being sad or having low self-esteem. I think actual depression is much deeper and it's actually a of serious course. problem. Yeah. Very actual serious. depression and what you said is what is depression, what is the cause, is mm -hmm. actually, there's an actual chemical imbalance yes. that happens mm -hmm. in, your, in your brain which causes you to have, to block your dopamine receptors so that you cannot exhibit the feeling of, you know, mm -hmm. That good feeling that you get when you eat right. something or whatever, and Specifically your thoughts. Specifically, serotonin receptors. Yeah, serotonin. Yeah. Sorry, serotonin yeah. receptors. So your thoughts just spiral into this vicious, you know, negative cycle, and then you can't get out of it. Right. And that is something very serious. And for that, you need medication to be able Absolutely. to counterbalance that. Right? So Absolutely. that's what actual depression is. And so that, I think that there's that fine line then, in one sense, which is what is sadness and what is depression. And, exactly. and the right. thing is that we have sadness to is just a natural. It's, it's a natural it's thing, and, and, we, and, need, and we need that's key. Right? And we need sadness in one sense because if you don't have sadness, how would you ever know what happiness is? Right. Because you have to. It's all relative. You have to, it's relative, though, right? So, I mean, sadness plays a very important role in that. Mm -hmm. sense, right? Sadness, it, it brings a range of emotions. All of our emotions that exist within us are there for a reason. They're not just there just for the sake of, you know, being something that, that, just, that is there. So, it's very important, you know, in that sense. You know, the, the, the differentiation between sadness and depression is that depression is a chronic ailment. Mm -hmm. And it's something that waxes and wanes over time. And it doesn't dissipate ever. Whereas sadness... You know, you might be sad for a day, two days, a week maybe, mm -hmm. but then after that, it's gone and you never experience that sadness again. Mm -hmm. Whereas with depression, you're kind of stuck with it for the rest of your life until you seek that medical treatment. What are the causes of depression or even sadness generally that so, we feel? It, it can be biological. Okay, so people can be predisposed to having depression, depressive yeah. feelings. Okay? Mm -hmm. okay, But then it's environmentally activated. So let's just say I have the genes, so to speak, right? So it goes into detail with the lengths of the receptors and whatnot, but just to simplify, let's just say I have the genes for depression, right? But I might never get depressed because the environment in which I live is so conducive to a positive, mm -hmm. you know, uh, upbringing, so, so conducive to that internal locus of control that I never really tap into those depressive genes. Whereas if I'm brought up in an environment where I'm constantly being degraded and, you know, uh, ridiculed, yeah. then those depressive genes will kick in yeah. mm -hmm. and I'd be more likely to experience depressive feelings, right? And then it kicks into serotonin, right? You don't have enough serotonin being processed um, and there's just shortage of dopamine. I can touch a little bit upon that. It, it has also a lot to do with uh, your, because the brain is a very physical thing and a chemical thing, it has to do with your physical body as well, right? So mm -hmm. if your diet is off, if you're not getting the right vitamins and minerals, if you're not getting the right, you know, things in your body to be able to, to make your brain function optimally, you're going to be more, you know, inclined to getting depressed. If you're not physically active, right? if you're not actually using your brain properly. So all of these things are going to be combining to making you
feeling depressed, right? You know, one thing on top of that as well, we talked about this a couple episodes ago about identity, right? And the one thing I have to understand is that males in general, when they say that they something they say something like we are depressed, it almost becomes like, you know what, females, okay, fine, like it's okay, you're depressed, you're more fragile. But males, oh, you know, just get over it or that's not yeah, you're, right. You're, you're, you're supposed to be more, supposed to be more hard in yeah. right? You're not supposed yeah. to express your feelings or emotions yeah. in one sense. And I think yeah. that's a little bit of an issue that needs to be addressed as well. Where yeah, because then we feel, won't talk about it as much as we won't express it. Exactly. And we'll be right. dealing with it within ourselves you know, instead of getting help. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. What happens is that when you when you deal with it inside, the ideas and the thoughts fester inside and they build up over time. And eventually what happens when things build up, they explode. Right. right. Well, you take your anger out on your, your partner or your friend right. or your family or somebody. So in that sense, you have to let these things out in one sense. Right. right? You know, I think adding on to this is pretty interesting. Um, during Hazur Anwar's tour of Canada in, uh, in uh, 2016, a Jamis student asked Hazur, may Allah helper, that, you know, what is the cause for this depression and, you know, the sadness that everybody feels? Right. So Hazur said something very interesting that, you know, it, it happens because of people's worldly desires. Right. Right, because they wish to achieve something that's materialistic. That's not that doesn't have to do with spirituality. And when they right? can't so, achieve it, they break apart. And they can't. Mm-hmm. And then and then Hazur also said that, you know, Allah be zikri lahi tatmainul kulub, right? The verse of the Holy Quran, the I it is in the remembrance of Allah mm-hmm. that hearts find comfort. Mm-hmm. Right. So like just a natural or not natural, like the unnatural feeling of just being agitated throughout life. Why does that happen? Is because you know people aren't being comforted by whatever it is that they're getting in life, right? So they need and, to and turn the, towards spirituality. I find this so very interesting because we were just discussing internal and external locus of control. Now, when you turn to Allah the Almighty and you ask Him for His mercy and His help, you are giving up that internal locus of control for an external locus of control. But it's very interesting mm. because now you're not giving it up to people. You're giving it up to this power which you, mm. from the bottom of your heart, believe can help you, yeah. right? And because of that belief, it can yeah. absolutely change. And you know what you said based on like having these worldly desires. Say you have these worldly desires. If you're, for example, you want to get this job, right? You really yeah. want to get this job. If you were praying and working towards getting that job, and if you were, you know, asking Allah Taala for help to, you know, I really want to get this job. This, this is best for me. Get, like, yeah. you know, let me have this job. If you let that, if you get that variable out there, that if this is best for me, let me have this job, right? Yeah. Now, if you get it, you're gonna be happy. But if you don't get it, you're gonna be, you know, sad. you're gonna be. No, you're not gonna be sad, but you're gonna be mm. okay with the will of God. No, like you're you still know, gonna be content because yeah. you had a right? backbone. You and had being, God and being there content with you. is what yeah. the main thing is. Right? It's mm-hmm. not even about happiness or being joyful, of, but just it's just being comforted or being content about whatever is going on. And I think, I think, I think even with, with being content, another thing that I can also recommend is that you have to surround, your environment plays a big role in this too. 100%, and you have yeah. to surround yourself with positive people as people, well. Yeah, because, yeah. for example, if you surround yourself with people who are every day talking about the negative aspect of life and you know they, they're feeling these sort of things, it also impacts you as well, whether it's directly or indirectly as well. So again, you know, for example, like whatever a lot of times they say is that when you go to sleep, the last thing that you listen to or think about, it does have an impact on your dreams as well. So again, throughout the day, surround yourself with positivity as well. Yeah, so I actually just wanna, I, I, just, I was just gonna say, I wanna take a minute here to discuss a study that happened, right? So uh, this was a study done by Facebook. And uh, we, we touched base on this in one of the previous episodes, but essentially what they did is they broke people up into two separate groups. So you had the positive group and the negative group. And what they did is they filtered your friend feed so that the negative group only received negative comments, okay? So they would see, wow. you know, people that are having a bad day, right? So they'd post like, you know, not feeling too good today. That's what they would see. Whereas the positive group would only see positive comments, mm-hmm. right? Like amazing day today, beautiful sun, beautiful weather. And what they found interestingly enough is that based on the kinds of comments that people were seeing on their friends wall, right? They would cater their comments more so towards that kind of uh, outlook. Yeah. So people in the positive group would say, amazing day, beautiful yeah. weather, time to go to the beach. Whereas yeah. people in the negative group would say, <clears throat> feeling down, feeling alone, you know, uh, no one's here with me, whatever, right? Along those lines. So just ki- kind of going back to, uh, you know, surrounding yourself with positivity. And mm-hmm. I think Jamaat Ahmadiyya does such an amazing, uh, you know, part in that, right? We have Lajna Imala, Nasirat, Itfal, Khudam, mm-hmm. Insar. Mm-hmm. You're surrounding yourself with people of your own age, of your own mindset, right? And it's like together you can kind of get through anything. And then at the same time, you have the Khalifa of Islam, of course. Azur, may Allah be his helper, who opens his doors. You know, he acts like he asks youth to write letters to him to establish a living relationship. A relationship with him in the yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And this could, you know, this sort of balances your life as well. And it really grounds you as well when you know that you have a living relationship with. And think about it, for example, think about the situation where a, a person who is Muslim, they go, then they're told, you know, we're commanded to go to the masjid for congregational prayers. You go to the masjid, you meet 10, 15, 20 people on e- at, at each prayer. 
everyone yeah, asking yeah. you, hey, how's your day? How's your day? How are you? Them, right? Socialize with them too. If you times that by five prayers, I mean, on average, you're meeting about 100 people, you know, unique people every day. Whereas right. the average person might interact with one, two, right. or three so people. So the system is right. set up so, for you to succeed, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Imagine how many thoughts are coming and in this, at one time. And this human interaction is actually something that other people crave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Because uh, if I've, if I've, we if take I've for granted. We take for five, granted. <laughs> I'll come into the namaz five, ten times a day at the same masjid. I have, I'm bound to build a connection with some of the people there. Uh, Absolutely. Exactly. So if I'm exactly. meeting those people and I start to them and I'm having a bad day, I can, I can confide in one of them yeah. and be like, no, you know, things are not going well. Right. Or something is wrong and they can help me out with that, right? So that's a huge thing. But what you said earlier about, you know, your thoughts and, and not thoughts, but being positive. Yeah. Uh, that's another thing that, you know, a lot of motivational books, a lot of things like that, they all talk about this positivity and, you know, thinking positive and how positive attracts more positivity mm -hmm. towards you, right? Mm -hmm. And that has that's to do a lot, a lot of with, attraction. yeah, a lot of attraction. And that's a lot, with, again, with the wiring of the brain, right? So if you're always thinking positive thoughts, you're going to wire and your that, brain. And this positive, law also has right? to do with being thankful. Yes. Mm -hmm. something yeah, as well. yeah. Right? So, I mean, if you have positive thoughts about what is going on, you know, it's actually a Hadith al Qudsi. You know, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was, uh, was, was, was actually told by God Almighty that I am as my servant thinks I am. Thinks so, I am. Right, right. So yeah. let my servant think of me as he, pleases. as he pleases. Right. So if you have positive thoughts about God and how he will treat you, then that is how God will treat you. Right. You know, you know, one of the beautiful things I see is that, you know, the role model of the Holy Prophet, so peace be upon him, him, himself, right? Like the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, has said at one point that the Holy Quran was revealed in a state of sadness. That's, that's right. So you should yeah, yeah. recite it mm -hmm. in a state of sadness as well so that you could have that impact. You know, it can mm -hmm. have an impact on your soul and your yeah, heart. Yeah, yeah. And the Promised Messiah, peace be upon him, in, in the commentary of uh, a verse of the Holy Quran, you know, he comments on this and he says that, you know, this actually shows how much sadness there was in the life of the, of the Holy, Holy Prophet, Prophet because the Holy Quran was revealed to him and the Holy Prophet peace upon him said that you know it's revealed in a state of sadness so you should recite in a state of sadness right you know and then I but I mean in contrast to this we find that companions of the Holy Prophet peace upon him when they would describe him they would say that he's always he was always happy. smiling, yeah, yeah, smiling yeah. right and he was always happy and he would always meet people with a smile on his face and he would be joyful you, you know what right? so this this sort of this is a Amazing example. You know, one thing that comes to mind as well is that let's just, let's take in a scenario of hypothetical situation. Let's remove sadness altogether, right? Now we have happiness all the time. What 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 are we gonna think in the situation that oh you know what we've yeah. achieved this happiness we, we did everything ourselves. Mm -hmm. right. This sadness makes us realize as human beings how feeble we are, how weak yeah. we are, yeah. how weak. Yeah. and this helps us to turn to God. Right. and develops our faith in God. Because if it was all about happiness all the time, we would think to ourselves, wow, I'm so strong, I'm always yeah. happy, and I can, I can do everything. Right. But when, you are, you get, when do you get sad? When you don't accomplish something, when something doesn't go your way? And that's what ends up making you turn towards God in your sadness. You know? And again, you're, you're talking about sadness yeah. over there. And, and you know, yeah. being happy all the time would just desensitize you to happiness to a point where you, you just wouldn't feel anything. Even happiness wouldn't be happiness anymore. Exactly. Right? It, it would be. <laughs> I, I actually just want to touch on something that you were saying, uh, you know, with regards to the Holy Prophet and how Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, uh, you know, the Holy Quran was revealed in a state of sadness. And, you know, you could just tell his life, right? It was yeah. very sad. But then he would always greet people with a smile on his face. Now, there's research coming out recently that says that, you know, if you're in a down mood, if you're not feeling too good about yourself, smile. Just yeah, fake it. Start with smiling, right? Yeah. Just start yeah. smiling. Fake it till you make it. Right? Fake it till you make it. Exactly. Yeah. And you yeah. just keep smiling. And what they found is that in a matter of hours, right, what happens is your mood starts to switch, right? You essentially trick your brain into saying, you know what? I'm not sad. I'm happy. Yeah, it's very interesting. You know, um, Hazrat Muslim has actually given some tips about how to achieve a, you know, a desired state in prayer and worship. You know, to a point where you know where people can actually weep and cry in front of God. You know, some people have trouble. Yeah, and he's supposed know, to right? just pretend if you can't. Exactly right. right. So Hazur, uh, may Allah be pleased with them, said that you know make a face as if you're going to cry, and this will actually bring the emotions out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. So it's just the same thing. You know? Right. It's, it's, what the, thing it's, it's like it's the same yeah. thing. Like I mentioned, it's the wiring of the brain. Right. So if you exactly. think positive, if you think negative, yeah. it's what's gonna it's gonna have a physical yeah. toll on you. Right. Right. So, you think positive, you're going to have positive thoughts and positive things are going to happen to you. And, I'll, and I'll, at the same time, to add on to that too, is we have to understand what sadness is, right? Because for some people living in, in Canada, we have all the, you know, everything available to us. We get sad when, for example, you know, someone doesn't like our picture or someone doesn't... Hashtag you know, first world problems. Or, or you know, first world <laughs> problems in 
one <laughs> sense, right? Like we get exactly. these little things over there, but at the same time, we, we, we see all these pictures of Africa and what's happening over there or in the Middle East <laughs> with the war that's going on over there. And they're just happy to even have a little morsel of food. Right, yeah, and they you know? get happy and, if they and, get water that they day. They get they water get that day, and we're, right, you know, yeah. we're drinking water, eating food, and, and we're enjoying it. Like look at the, the famine yeah. in Sudan right now, right? Yeah. And like, here <laughs> we are just... I think that, has, that ties back into what he, what uh, Rabbi Sahib said about, uh, you know, being thankful. So if you're yeah. grateful, it, you're going to be happier. And, you know, uh, in Islam, there's a hadith that says that, you know, you're, look, if you, if you look, should look at people that, are, that have less than you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to be able to, you know, uh, to appreciate, I guess, appreciate, exactly. to appreciate what you have. Right? Yeah. And then at the same you. time, you know, the Holy Quran, Wala in la 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 if you are yeah. grateful, <laughs> I will increase for mm-hmm. you. So, right. so what are some of the methods that we can use to counter depression? How can we get out of depression? What can we do if we are depressed or we know somebody that's depressed? Honestly, the best thing to do is to seek help. Right? Depression is one of those things that you can't go through alone. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there's countless research which has now shown that, you know, once you have familial support, emotional support, uh, that, that's the first step. Following that, you need to seek professional medical treatment, right? Once your family's on board and they say, you know what, we're here, we have your back. Uh, we're going to, you know, be there for you throughout your whole process. And then you go to the medical treatment center and, you know, then they guide you through the whole process. You can overcome depression. You know, a huge thing with depression, there's tons of research on this and it's been proven by time and time again, is physical activity. Right? Yes. So <laughs> if you are physically, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So right <laughs> if you're physically yeah. active, if you go for walks, you know, when you see the greenery and the, the blue in the, in the water, it changes the effect in your, in your biochemistry when That's you're so walking, true. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that has a very soothing effect, right? Yeah. And right. when you do physical activity, vigorous physical activity, or even like, you know, light, what happens is it, is it changes your chemistry and it releases endorphins in your body, which mm-hmm. are, you know, good feeling hormones, as you can mm-hmm. say, right? Right. And that changes your chemistry again and rewires again and it makes you, you know, feel better. And you so know, physical activity is key. So if, you know, you need to have that in your regime so that you can just, get better. Exactly. And you know what's very interesting is uh, another study just to kind of uh, topple up on top of that is um, in Norway, you know, one of those countries where you have sunlight for six months and then darkness for another six yeah, months. Yeah, yeah. You know, research has found that in the six months of darkness, the level of depression goes up significantly. I don't know that. Right? And it's yeah. just lack yeah. of sunlight, right? L- uh, lack yeah. of endorphins. Yeah. So what they do then is uh, they have these sun lamps which they have in their houses and they sit in front of them for a few hours a day just to maintain those same endorphins. And that level of happiness, happiness, I guess, oh, too. Exactly, yeah. And I think the most yeah. the most powerful thing that we can take away in terms of, you know, how to cure depression is, you know, there's a verse in the Holy Quran that says, La taknatu me rahmatillah, right? That do not despair from the mercy of Allah. So that if you're a believer, if you believe in Allah Ta'ala, you will know that Allah Ta'ala says that don't despair from my mercy. So seek Allah Ta'ala's help, you know? So I ask him, you know, that, you know, he's, he's not going to leave you alone. He's always there with you every step of the way and he'll get you out of whatever you're in. So, But with I that, think, you know, God also says that uh, you need to take, uh, you know, actual action towards it as yeah, well, right? Of course, like, of course, yeah. of course, right? Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. prayer on top of that. Yeah. So, of course, no, see, I mean, like the interesting help. thing about this verse is that it's actually speaking about people who have committed sins against their souls. Or oh, they wronged their souls. Oh, so right? they wronged like themselves. They've, they've, yeah. they've wronged their souls, right? Yeah, yeah. So it so says that... that sh- yeah, so you know that he's always there and you, you should never despair in his mercy because exactly. it encompasses everything. Yeah. So I think right. what's interesting over here is that we have two aspects. One is obviously from a religious perspective, we say that, you know, God is the one who helps. But at the same time, from the our point of view for someone else is that, you know, if you need professional help, don't be shy as well at the same yeah, time. And I physical think, activity. And, and <laughs> at the same time, we can't forget about the physical activity right. as then, well. I mean, at the right. same time, us being youth and us talking about this subject, you know, it's already could, a huge step forward, I think. Yeah, right. And I think people could approach us as well. Yeah, I mean, right? yeah, exactly. Like, Listen, feel free to talk to your open. friends about it, right? Yeah. Tell your friends about it because at the end of the day, they're there for your well-being, right? They're not going to ridicule yeah. you. They're not going to yeah. say anything. Even as we are talking about this right now, we are not perfect as well. We've oh, gone through stages of sadness mm-hmm, and, and despair and happiness and all these things that come with us too, right? Because so it's natural. It's a natural thing though. Right. You know, our parents have experienced this. We have experienced this. So again, talk to someone, right? As you're watching this episode, perhaps reach out to someone as well yeah. if you have something in your mind. Yeah. I think we should end off with this a big, big smile, Shadia. Big smile. Big <laughs> smile. <laughs> and I just want you guys to know that I'm here for you guys at all times. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of okay. course. So I really enjoyed okay. this discussion again. Again, yeah. So, likewise. Zakmila. No ne hala ne jamaat mujhe kuch keh 